and welcome to the final part of our notes for radioactive decay and nuclear chemistry. This is all about how radioisotopes can be used in our everyday lives. So the aim is to describe some of the many ways radioisotopes are used in our lives. So what are some of the effects of some radioisotopes? So Radioisotopes can be useful to humans, but they also have potential dangers because of radiation that they release. So they're used to date previously living material, and this is primarily done with carbon-14. Again, this was covered in Earth Science, how living materials take in carbon through the atmosphere, and while you're alive, you continue taking in carbon even though it decays. So you, you don't lose the levels of carbon in your body or in the body of any living creature until you die and you're no longer taking that carbon in. Then it begins to decay. So this can then be used to find the date or the age of that previously living material. There's also a small amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere, which is used by organisms. And, and like carbon-12, when it dies, no more carbon is taken in. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. So in that time, half of the radioactive material will become stable. It decays into nitrogen-14. So when, that, um, when something is 5,730 years old, if you found a fossil, it would contain half carbon-14 and half nitrogen-14, and then you would know that that uh, fossil was 5,730 years old due to the ratio of carbon-14, the radioisotope, and nitrogen-14, the stable isotope. So you determine the age of the organism based on how much carbon-14 is left in the organism. Uranium-238 decays to become stable lead-206. As time passes, the amount of lead increases and uranium decreases. These are used to date rock and geological formations. These are typically used to date very old rock and formations, uh, since the half-life of uranium-238 is about 4.51 billion years, which is about the age of the Earth. So if we find material that is half decayed, we know it's about the age of the Earth. It would have about half uranium-238 and half lead-206. That would mean one half-life has gone by, and it would be about the same age as the Earth. The oldest uh, rock material we found is a little over 4 billion years old, and it was found somewhere in Canada. Chemical tracers are radioactive materials that can be detected um, in a substance and some in the human body as well. So a tracer is a radioisotope that's used to follow the path of a material in a system. So it traces a path. Radioactive phosphorus-31 is used in fertilizers because it can be detected in plants. So carbon-14 is used to map the path of carbon in metabolic processes. Industrial applications means where it can be used in industry. Materials absorb radioactive isotopes and gamma rays. The thicker the material, the more radiation is absorbed. Radi radiation products can be used to measure how thick materials are. Plastic wrap and aluminum foil are one of those products that is used to measure how, how much radiation penetrates. They test the strength of a weld. Medical applications, which some of you may be familiar with, are when Radioactive isotopes that have short half-lives, they're used because they leave the body very quickly, so it doesn't cause damage to healthy tissue. These are used in the treatment of disorders and diseases, such as iodine and others. They're also used to make material free from bacteria or other disease-causing organisms. Iodine-131 is used for the detection and treatment of thyroid conditions. Iodine um, that accumulates in the thyroid gland, so small amounts of iodine-131 can be given to a patient to see if something is wrong. 
It also can be given in large doses to destroy some of the thyroid. So it has more than one application. Cobalt-60. This emits large amounts of gamma radiation, which gamma, of course, is very penetrating and has no mass and no charge. It is given off to kill cancerous tumors. So it can be very dangerous, but it also is used to destroy tumors. Gamma radiation is also used in food to kill bacteria and other germs with on uh, produce, fruits, vegetables, spices, meats. So cobalt-60 and cesium-137 emit gamma radiation in a way that's useful for food products. Technadium, atomic number 43, is a radioactive element absorbed by cancer cells. So TC99 is given to patients and can be detected by a scan. Of course, with all of these great uses for radioisotopes, there also are some risks, since healthy tissue can also be damaged during cancer treatment. So they have to be very careful when they're using this technology. High doses can cause illness and death. It can mutate your cells. So there's always, a, they're trying to make sure you're not exposed to too much additional radiation. So these mutations could then be passed on to your on offspring. They can damage your cells and make you infertile. So it's really important that you limit your, your um, exposure. Nuclear power plants have material with half, long half-lives. This means they stay around for a really long time. Okay, these products, though, are hard to store and hard to dispose of. Nobody wants these products disposed of or used near their house. So, you know, for obvious reasons, there have been some issues. However, many countries use nuclear power plants with not no problems. France, for example, uses 97% nuclear power in their country. Okay, they can cause nuclear accidents, which would, could be, cause radiation to leak into the water or the air. And that completes our notes and I will see you in class.